In a previous video, we covered the decomposition of a rational function into partial fractions, where in that case, you had non-repeating linear factors. In this case, we have repeated linear factors. And if you look at this, um, this guy right here, I factored it below, and you'll notice there is a repeated linear factor right here. This delta plus 1 appears twice when you factor it out. And that causes things to change. It's not going to be the same technique um, for decomposing this as if it were a non-repeating factor. So here's, here's the big difference. And once we get past the big difference, then the techniques are going to be the same from there on. What you need to do is turn this into three fractions, like before. One of them is a over delta. That's no surprise. One of them is b over delta plus 1, the other factor. That's no surprise. Here's the difference. The third one is going to be delta plus 1 squared. Okay. So whenever you have a repeating factor, your job is to add another whole fraction here with that repeating factor squared. Or let's say this were here. Let me take this to an extreme. Let's say that were cubed. Then you would have to add another factor here, which would be the cubed portion. As high as that exponent is, as many times as it's repeated, you need that many fractions to cover all the possibilities there. But in this case, we're not going to cover cubed. I think that's getting a little extreme. You should see the pattern and the way to solve it with this example. So let's go forward and solve this thing. Remember what the technique is at this point. We need to solve this equation this equation right here. And the way you do that is by multiplying both sides by every factor that you see in the denominators. So on the left, that's nice and easy. It just turns into this. 5 delta squared plus 7 delta plus 3. Okay, the denominator is clear completely. The right is a little more complicated because when you multiply by all three factors, the delta clears, but you still have delta plus 1 squared left. In the middle, one factor of delta plus 1 clears, but you still have a factor of delta and another one of delta plus 1. And on the right side, delta plus 1 squared clears, but you still have c times delta. Okay? So now we're going to be solving this equation. And again, you could always solve these things as a system of equations. I think that technique is a little more complicated. We're going to focus on something called the heavy side technique. Uh, heavy side was a mathematician who apparently did a lot of partial fraction decompositions and invented this easier way to deal with them. So, thanks, heavy side. Uh, he's making our life easier, believe me. What we're going to do is choose a very nice zero. Choose something for delta that's going to make everything work out. And I think zero is going to be great because look what happens over here. It's going to cancel that one out. And cancel this one out, too, while we're at it. So what's left? If you do delta equals 0, you get the following. 3 on the left side equals, um, equals a times 0 plus 1. That's just 1 squared. These guys cancel out. I'm sorry, not the c itself, but the delta. And what's left is just, just this, just a equals 3. So that was cool. Nice and quick. And we're going to choose another value of delta, which is delta equals uh, negative 1. I think negative 1 is going to do some things for us. That's going to make uh, these guys cancel out right there. We'll figure out what c is. So when you choose delta equals negative 1, look what happens. We get 5 times negative 1 squared plus 7 times negative 1. I'm just working on the left side of the equation right now. And that equals, look at the right side. The A's cancel out. There's nothing, nothing left there. The B's cancel out. There's nothing left here. You just get this. C times negative 1. So let's work that down a bit. This becomes 5 minus 7 plus 3 equals negative C. Uh, 5 minus 7 is negative 1. Negative C, I think. So we get C equals negative 1. That's another one of our solutions. Now, we don't know B. And there's only so far we can go with the heavy side technique. In this case, we're going to have to choose 
another value for x that's going to help us out with b, knowing what a and c are. So go ahead, choose some value for delta. And in this case, there's nothing super nice uh, that's going to just make these things cancel out quickly. Let's just choose something that's not going to be too terrible. Like if you chose delta equals 17, that would be terrible because you would have to do 17 squared, 7 times 17, and so on. Let's just choose something nice like delta equals 1. And just to be real clear, the reason I'm choosing delta equals 1 is because I know I can do 1 squared, 7 times 1. I, I can do those things pretty easily. So we're going we're gonna to try to work through this. 5 times 1 squared plus 7 times 1 plus 3. That's what I get on the left side when I plug 1 in for delta. And on the right side, I get the following. A times 1 plus 1 squared. So I, I keep scrolling the screen. I just have to keep looking back at what my equation is. B times 1 times 1 plus 1 and C times 1. Okay. Um, yep, that looks good. Okay, so now I've plugged in delta equals 1 for everything. And there's more I can plug in here because I actually know what A is. I know that A is negative 3. I know that C is 1 because we've been doing some work up until now. So we keep on simplifying this. We get 5 plus 7 plus 3 equals negative 3 times 2 squared, that's 4, plus B times 1 times 2, that's going to be B times 2, plus 1 times 1 is just 1. So keep working this down. We get 15 equals negative 12 plus 2B plus 1, and this becomes ugh, negative 11, 26 equals 2B, so that means 13 equals B, okay? So the technique here, just to review this, and, and what you would do at this point, obviously, you would put 13 in for B, you would put negative 1 in for C, and you would put 3 in for A, and that is your solution right here. That's the partial decomposition. So just to review the techniques, the main difference, because we had a repeated linear factor, this guy right here, that delta plus 1 squared, because that's repeated, you not only need delta plus 1 as a denominator, but delta plus 1 squared as a denominator. And then, after you're done with that, you're going to need to solve this the normal way with the heavy side technique as far as you can, and then just choose some other x value, try to pick something not too terrible, um, and then finish up solving for a, b, and c.